in this video, I really want to talk about, like, my dance life and, like, really update you on that. I am talking, I chose this because my first thought was, well, this seemed like a fun video to film. And I'm kind of making sure that I'm talking constantly because my mom is watching a movie that has a lot of uh, copyright, like, music in it. And it, luckily, you can't really hear it too much back here. And just for safety of copyright reasons, I am talking over it and stuff. So hopefully, I don't get copyrighted. But anyways, I hate the new schedule pretty much. Like, here's the thing. I love dance, but I like to be a well-rounded dancer. And... To be honest, ballet has never really been my thing, but lately I've been kind of realizing technique is very important as a dancer, and even though I don't really like ballet as much as other style, I am trying my best to kind of somewhat enjoy it, because it's important as a dancer technique, and technique comes from ballet. Ballet is the foundation of all dance. And right now, I'm at the point where now, these classes and this training is more important than ever. Because I really got to pay attention in class and stop messing around. Because I have a huge audition coming up, which is boot camp, or booty camp is what it technically is, but boot camp. And I'm adding just like the same booty camp. And stuff, so like, I think the whole thing is turned into an audition, and I would pull up the schedule and like read to you, but my phone is literally dead. Like, there you can see, I'm about to charge it after this, but like, it comes down to where technique is very important, and Abby kind of turned the whole thing into an audition, and and of like looking for kids to be on her team and stuff. And I really want to do good and I really want that to happen for me even though she like at this point she like what she said kind of in the video talking about it was she talked a little bit and she said that uh, who knows she's always looking for new talent and stuff. Now Here's the thing, I really wanted to go to, like, actually go there to the Abby Lee Dance Company in Pittsburgh because I really wanted to do this in person because it's kind of one of my dreams to go oh, see the place and it's also one of my dreams to go see the L.A. studio because on, on Dance Mom, the studio looked very different versus now I feel like the LA studio looks slightly like it looks different than back on the show I feel like like because when they were filming the show I remember like the front room or like they're like I don't even know like I think they moved locations I don't know or something because on the show, there really wasn't a front room or a front area, area to the um, studio. You know, versus now, there is because, and I know that because uh, I do these Zoom classes, and Gianna Martello does these Zoom classes from this one dance room room and it's a very nice dance room it has like this really nice like wooden floor or the really nice like flooring in there and then it has like this wall that's gold with like I that looks really cool and it says the Abby Lee Dance Company in white also pretty soon I am going to pick out an outfit for like boot camp because the one that I chose is a green leotard and these green leggings. And I feel like 
I taped this picture that said boot camp on it. I don't think it can stay on. And also, it's not the best option for boot camp because I feel like I noticed that with leotards and stuff, sometimes you can see the, like, sweaty pit stains and, and stuff, and it's not good. And they get really hot and sweaty, and I feel like I, if I'm going to be dancing for hours a day auditioning, you know, like, it takes a lot of work, and it, like, it's the thing, and, and I don't feel like it can be my best option. Also, I like dancing more in, like, two-piece dance outfits for multiple reasons. Sorry, I had some peeled skin. But, like, I, I like two-piece dance outfits for a lot of reasons. First up, I like wearing, like, shorts, like, two-piece dance outfits with, like, shorts because they're comfortable and they, they're they better than, like, long pants or leggings because then that stuff gets hot and sweaty. And with some shorts, it's a, a little bit less hot and sweaty. And I also like, that's kind of the reason behind shorts also. I, for some reason, have always just loved shorts. Like, I always like shorts partly because a uh, fun fact about me is that I hate wearing long pants to bed because I generate heat. And what that means is, is I have a very warm, happy, like, confident personality thing and so because of that basically at night I I get really hot and sweaty like I get hot and sweaty and then I'm the type where for some weird reason I hate taking the covers off I hate taking them off because I don't know why when I was little oh, and had a toddler brain I thought like someone like, I didn't know. Like, I thought some weird things. And, like, I, I didn't want, like, someone, like, grabbing my leg or something. Like, I, that was when I was little, even though I knew that was never going to happen. But still. Oh, oh, there's one story that I want to tell you. When I was little, this is a scary story. So when I was little, I had this Doc McStuffins, like, doctor's table thing. And what happened was, on this one night, I, for some reason, it went off and it started talking in the middle of the night, like, the doc, it, like, saying something like, the doc is in or something. And, and it scared my mom half to death because she thought someone broke in and was in the room when, like, so she and came in here and checked and saw that I was fine and stuff. Um, and then the next morning, and, and she kind of brought it up to me and my dad. And so we pressed the button on it to make it talk. And she went like, yeah, that's the same sound. And for some reason, it freaked me out to this day because with mine, you have to press like one of the buttons to get to talk. Or do something with it. With it. And like. I was asleep. So. Like. It was kind of freaky. But nothing really happened. What we think. What we think happened. When we think. That like. I. Okay. I don't know. If this is a joke. I'm pretty sure. Not. Because of how. Real my mom talks about this sometimes. That like. Basically. Like. That, like, my grandmother, my dad's mom, like, I, when, after she died, she became, like, a ghost and, like, comes and is in this house sometimes, and that freaks me out for some reason, like, like, it freaks me out. But I do think it is a joke it's just that my mom talks about realistically. And, yeah, when I was little, I didn't realize 
that like they were talking like my mom would talk about it so real and I when I was little thought for sure it was a joke and then and later in life when we moved in with my sister my mom continued we talked about it a lot and at this point it was that once we moved in with my sister kind of the time when I started realizing I don't need to ask my mom if every little detail about my life. Like, because when I was little, oh, everything I did got run through my mom. Or, and, like, if I had a snack, like, I would always ask her, like, hey, can I have a snack? Or, and it wasn't like, oh, I can't reach the snacks. Or, or I sometimes... I'm um, like, every little detail, oh, can I do a craft, like, went through my parents and stuff. So at that point, I realized I don't always need to do that. Like, you should respect your parents and stuff. But for me, I was at the point where, like, I realized, oh, I don't need to ask for everything. I can kind of do things such as, such as, as do a craft and stuff, and then, yeah. But, like, bigger things I definitely do ask. And my mom just realized, well, I was growing up. But, yeah. For me, anyways, new way, like, right now, dance-wise, I'm going to find something different to wear for boot camp. And also, I love wearing, like, crop top type vibes. For dance because or like active wearing like crop top because and uh, yet yeah, I do believe that you shouldn't be inappropriate that is something true like if it's something inappropriate you shouldn't wear obviously like you know like but crop tops I feel like aren't inappropriate I feel like I would start, it depends on where you're going and stuff. Like, if you're going to, like, I, a red carpet event or something, and no, crop top tops are a little inappropriate for that, you know? No, plus, I don't ever see any, like, really, really fancy, like, dressed up crop tops. But I'm like, if you're going to dance, it's fine, and I feel like even certain times, I'm my, even certain times, um, you can wear it just, don't be inappropriate and know that there's certain places that you don't want to wear crop tops to, like, red carpet events or, or primarily, like, if you're going and you're getting, like, a surgery or something, you probably don't want to wear it because, well, you just probably don't and stuff, like, I mean, if, well, you are probably going to have to change anyways in that situation, so I kind of feel like that one doesn't care to me. But if there's certain rooms, like, at a place that you're going, like, no crop tops, then don't wear them. Because you could get in trouble. But I like wearing crop tops to dance. That is kind of one thing that, like, my mom at the point of realizing is that she kind of is at the point of realizing that uh, before I was never allowed to wear a crop top. Like, crop top, no, no, no. Like, a big no because my mom labeled them as inappropriate and, and stuff. But then, once I became a dancer and I started doing the worldwide and stuff, um, eventually... <laughs> Only dad let me get a two-piece dance outfit this one day. You've seen it a million times. And then I came home, showed it to her. At first, she was like, well, where's the rest of it? And I'm like, this is it. And she like, she kind of wasn't a big fan of that. Then finally, she came up with the room. You can wear it, but only during dance. And now she got some that are a little more coverage that I can wear kind of not just dance. And stuff. But I like wearing crop tops for dance because 
they don't get as hot and sweaty. They don't show off that, like, sweaty pit stain thing. And I kind of have no clue why I'm wearing for boot camp. Like, I know it's an audition, so I, like, really want to stand out. But I have no clue on what I want to wear. And here's the thing. I want it to stand out. I want it to be comfortable. Primarily, I want to be like a two-piece dance outfit. I'm very much unprepared for this. And that's one thing is that uh, now it's getting to where air before. I would kind of goof off sometimes in dance class such as like with acro. Like I wouldn't want to do acro. I would like turn my camera off for acro. But, and I still do that, but that's just because I don't like acro. I think it looks good. I don't like acro for me. Like, for me, I don't like doing acro to me because acro, like, I know that with a lot of the, like, stuff, you have to be able to do back bends or handstands or even elbow stands, and I don't have that. Also back flexibility. I don't have a ton of it. I will never have a ton of it. Um, it because I do have two rods in my back. I understand it. But I feel like I can get somewhere with it if I work at it. Plus, like sometimes my dad will like see something and be like, I, you're not doing that. And I'm like, why? And he's like, because first up, you don't have the back flexibility. You have rods in your back, so you're not going to be able to. Um, but it's at the point where at this point, he learned that I got to have a life. Like, I got to, um, there can only be so much that comes with that. Like, this time, like, if, if there was a way that I can magically not have rods and be perfectly fine and stuff, then I would, but it came down to where even though that was my decision, it was my decision because first up, we couldn't let the scoliosis get worse because then it would get really bad. And then the second thing is I wanted out of that back brace, and primarily I wanted it fixed. So, surgery was the only option at that point. It went to fix two and all and stuff. So, yeah. It's fun little thing is that I feel like when I was thinking about it, I went like, that's not going to be good for my dance career. But I thought it would be a lot more challenging than what it actually is. It barely even affects me. I feel like it didn't even make my back flexibility go down. It stayed the same. It's not going to get crazy far we don't think but he did say that uh, like I can work on it all I want but uh, he said he's not helping and he said like I right know flexibility for the waist hips legs that like you know is its own thing but I'm really excited for boot camp but right now, it's at the point where, like, sometimes I would goof off during class. Like, I would maybe, like, stop and, like, take a sip of water. Or, like, I quickly play with the fidget. Like, pick up a fidget and, like, fidget for a second. And that needs to stop because now this training and listening to and these teachers and, like, paying attention in class is very, it's more important than ever because... Me goofing off and, like, having a little bit more fun on versus me training and working my butt off and taking in their corrections is the difference between me nailing the audition versus me messing up because I didn't pay attention. So training, at this point, I'm putting a rule down um, for myself. Which is, well, two rules. And which is, training come first. That's the first thing. And there's going to be a lot of training in the next.
Hot Bowl. Oh, in the next, like, two weeks. Because we have, like, 15 days or something until boot camp. So, yeah. Working my butt off. And there's going to be a lot of training. And primarily on flexibility because... That's the area that I really want to focus on because that's the area that needs the most help. Also, a little bit, just a little bit on balance because overall my balance is not terrible like it was terrible. Versus now I can hold the relevé for like a minute straight with a little bit of bottling. Let me cut that off. Like, before, I could barely hold a relevé for maybe six or seven seconds. Now I can hold it for a minute. Yes, a little bit of bobbling in there, but not bad. My situation, oh, is that I'm good at that, but when it comes to, like, working on balance, like, holding a relevé with doing a tilt or something, which, fun fact, I can actually do, I just can't hold it. I can do it for like one second and stuff. And yesterday something really cool happened. So yesterday we had Gianna Martello. You know, love Gianna Martello. I love her class and because I'm learning from it and something that I learned, or well, I learned a few things. First step up, I want to get into the point, which was she was working with Usually she has like four or five kids in person and she and they're all around the same level, maybe slightly different and but close from what I can tell. She had sixteen kids. She had sixteen kids and is having them or splitting them into two different ballet bars with sixteen kids and all in, like, with so many different levels, um, with so many different levels, and, like, so many different levels and stuff, and it was kind of, um, like, it was hard for her, and, because she was in a small studio, like, a smaller studio with 16 kids, trying to make sure that they all have, like, a good amount of space to work on things, trying to divide her time evenly between each kid and the people on Zoom. Like, so many different levels, and only two ballet bars to work with. It was challenging. Challenging, and I did like that with the ballet bar stuff. They, she had the, um, four kids that I said, um, But anyway, I like that she had, like, the four kids that, like, do this every week so they know this stuff, which I was kind of familiar with a lot of it because I do this every week. But for me, I don't, like, one thing that is kind of a flaw is I do not know the technical terms. And things, but with me, I'm the type where, where you give me a term, um, or like, I, you give, like, we're going to use an example, like, I, um, let me think of an example, bad, I said, um, okay, Glee saw Jet to a Ralph May era Beth has come down single term. That's going to be our term. Like, a long combo. Now, I don't know the terminology, but I'm the type where I can watch someone do it, like, once. So, like, I can watch someone do it once, once, and from that point, I know how to do it. So, even though I don't know the technical term, I can kind of watch once and be like, okay, and do it from there and do amazing at it. I pick up really fast, which is something good. 
is like really good and sometimes there's something that I learned like I know my basic position now like fifth or second wait I for, I think this is first I don't fully know but second and fifth those are the ones that we use the most then and which I know that and I know like the basic like first, second, third, fourth, and fifth feet position. Like, you know, like I know I picked up on a lot of it. I also know what suit canoe means. I didn't at first. And then like we were using it almost all the time. So I kind of picked up on it. But yesterday, like what they did was they separated us into two groups. So they had a beginner group for like beginner levels. Um, and we actually learned a combo. We learned like a quick little combo. Very quick. And the beginner levels um, um, like did that combo. Versus with the advanced group, we did one that was similar but more advanced. Because we basically did the same thing but we had to let go of our leg. We had to releve up and come down and come down to pause, say, and then I think we relevate up and, like, came back down or something. Like, it was slightly more advanced because in the beginner version, we didn't have to let go of our leg. Like, like, we did have, and we didn't have to relevate up. Like, we didn't have to relevate up or let go of our leg. With the advanced version, we did. So like that was cool and the thing that was cool with that was that she said that at, for the people at home on Zoom, um, you are going to be doing both times because they could only do the beginner group once and then the advanced group once in person because they couldn't do them both at the same time because there's not enough space and that way she can see everyone better and stuff. But like... She went, like, if you are, are more, if you are advanced, do the advanced version both times. If you are not, do the beginner version both times. If you can't do both, if you can't do either of them, just try your best. So, like, that was really cool. And the cool thing was I was in the advanced version. Like, I was just barely there on the releve up. Let's face it, I don't have good balance when I have my leg in the air and stuff. So, primarily the part that I'm really going to focus on in the next, like, two weeks is flexibility is the main part. Because I almost have a straddle and I almost have my center foot or my side foot. Where they go out to the side. I'm, and then I'm somewhat close to my leg hole. It's not fully there. But and I feel like maybe if I keep working at it, it will be there soon. I don't think it will be there by boot camp. I'm going to try and work on it. But once I have that, and then... I can kind of work on this other trick that we we don't always do it, so I'm not, like, too focused on it, but sometimes we do it. And then I'll have all of, like, the very basic, like, things down. Uh, I do need to work more on, like, getting my oversplit on two dance blocks. And so, yeah, flexibility. The second thing is I'm going to work on a little bit of balance stuff because that can improve a little bit. And I'm going to, as much as I don't like ballet and technique, I'm going to try to work on that a little bit. Um, but I hate the new schedule for the summer worldwide. And the reasoning is before our schedule was that we had Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Mondays were ballet based and then we 
did ballet for like an hour and a half or something. And then we did, on top of that, we did a warm-up and stretch. We did jumps and turns, two different jumps and turns classes, and then a combo. That was Monday. Wednesday, we did tap, warm-up and stretch. We did and some gymnastics and tumbling sometimes. We did a combo and there jumps and turns, more jumps and turns. Then we switched to Gianna and did warm up and stretch, some jumps and turns, a combo, acro, more tap. And that was it. And then when versus then on Thursday, Thursday was kind of the all over the place because Thursday we started with like a warm up and stretch. We did, well no, we started with acro, we did warm up and stretch, conditioning, and then com jumps and turns, combo, and done. So like that was our schedule, but we were being well rounded. We had tap, we had ballet, we had acro, we had jumps and turns. The only thing we were missing was hip hop and jazz, and then like modern jazz. Versus now, my technique, I feel like I naturally have technique, so I'm not too worried, but my technique is starting to not be up to where it should be or where it has been in the past, so I'm working on that a lot. Because they switched ballet to Thursday, and it's not even a full ballet class. It's like five minutes of ballet. Like we do like four or five things, maybe six at most. And it's very annoying. So I don't really like the new schedule, but I like that there's more styles and different things in it. Peace out.